For today's quiz, we have sunflowers that we're going to be talking about. I haven't drawn as sunflowers. I don't actually have any sunflowers left, but I do have some echinacea that we could use. Regardless, we're just talking about numbers of flowers. And behind me, I have one flower and then another flower and then I've got two flowers and then three. What we want to know is can you pick up the sequence of the flowers and can you tell us how many flowers we should have in the next column. That's what I have written on the quiz here. I'll hold it up now so that you can see. You also notice that I put uh, the points value up here so it didn't interfere with your thoughts uh, about the number of flowers like if I had the five here ten and so on and as always write out as explicitly as you can how you're thinking uh, that you're getting this next column of flowers. Typical student responses vary greatly on this quiz. Uh, many of them will say look I can kind of pick up a pattern we're adding one so they might try that and they're going to find out right away, well, adding one doesn't seem to work. So they're going to end up trying other things. And the whole point of this quiz is to get them to interact with the numbers, see if they can find different ways of, of making and backing claims. Most of the students have a good time, but there's going to be a great variety of ideas. But push them to see if it actually works in all cases. Many will come up with cases where it works with most of them, but not all of them. So uh, see if they can end up pushing themselves to make sure that it, whatever scheme they come up with, it works for each and every one. As students are cooperating with one another, they're going to ask questions. They're going to say, can we write on the page? Of course. Can we use a calculator? If you'd like. Is it okay if we're speaking to one another? Yeah, sure. Be explicit with them about, look, dialogue is super important, but often by the time they get to the end of their ideas, they forgot what they started with. Have them write things down. So really encourage them to work on this paper. And that's why we have a nice full sheet here. So if they're saying, look, there's one here and there's another one here, tell them to put that down. So encourage them to write, well, I do have one here, and then I've got one here, and then I've got two here, and then I've got three, and then I've got five. And they can start to see these patterns. Remember, they don't have to go back and think each time. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I've got eight here. Because often, once they see this little pattern right there, they're like, oh, I think I've got it. So give them a few more minutes, and then we'll go over this. All right, let's give an explanation of this. This is a famous sequence. And what we might want to do is help the students say, well, because the sequence is so famous, we're going to call it F. And we'll say maybe this is going to be F to the 1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, F7, and F8. Now we've got columns that we have given names to. Most of them will say, we think we got the pattern, because if you have one here, it's going to end up becoming two, and then it's going to be becoming three. So it seems to be adding those that were there together. In other words, three is made up of one plus two. Five is made up of two plus three. Eight is made up of five plus three. And then our next one, we would end up having our 13, and then 13 and eight, and that would be 21. So 21 and 13 would end up, and I can't draw them here, but we're going to end up having our, we'll say, 34 total flowers. And that is the correct answer. Now that students have the answer, let's see if we can formalize this a little bit more. Let's see. If we ended up having two here, how do we end up getting two? Well, two could be uh, I had one, and then I also had another one. I take the two preceding uh, values to end up getting two. So how do I end up getting three? Well, I can end up saying, well, I had my two here, which I'll just leave that there, and then I'll add the one that I had preceding it. And then five would simply be, well, I have my three, and then I have my two here. So can we formalize this a little bit more? Remember, we've already named these F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5. 
So we can go into a little bit greater depth here. So we could say that, uh, well, let's just write this one out. We could say F5 is really equal to our F4 plus our F3. And then down here, we could have said our F3 is equal to F2 plus our F1. So we can come up with a statement that should work all the time. In other words, F of your given number, whatever it might happen to be, we'll just call it uh, N, would be equal to F, and then we could say N minus 1 plus F N minus 2. In other words, take the one, whatever value column you're in, you could say, well, take the one that precedes it and then add it to the one that preceded that one there. So uh, that should be a general statement that will work for all of them. And we can try that. Let's just try for F7 here. So I could say F7 would be equal to our, and this would be F7 minus 1 plus our F7 minus 2. So in other words, F7 equals our F6 plus our F5. And our F6 and our F5 are 8 and 5 each, so I could say F of 7 equals our 8 plus our 5, which was 5, and we could say F7 equals our 13. And that is a great way to start learning how to make proofs. Think about it. You're making claims and you're backing those and you're trying different cases. We could try this for each and every one. There's also something else interesting, because once you get a general form like this, students might then say, wait a second, if I had one here and a one here, could I have something that was before it? And the answer is yes, and it's already there. And this is a really important idea, the idea of no flower or zero. In other words, I could say, could I have the sequence starting at zero? And you'll notice that uh, this would still work because if I ended up saying, well, how do I get this one? Well, I could take the one before it plus the one before it, and I still end up with one. So that is the essence of working with numbers and being a mathematician, finding patterns that you hope are going to work everywhere in the universe. Real world examples of this include flowers, and that's why I have these flowers. Sunflowers are better. It's often been said that this pattern occurs over and over, and the specific name of this is called Fibonacci. So. The Fibonacci sequence or Fibonacci pattern you might hear that it occurs everywhere in nature, and everything always has to fall into one of these numbers, uh, either 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. That's not true. That's a major overstatement. If I were to count these petals, there's a good chance they might end up with one of these, but not always. In fact, the two samples that I have here, neither of them actually fall into one of these numbers. I end up with a 20. It's hard to know if I ended up with 20 because one of the petals had fallen off. But regardless, this does occur over and over, often in more complicated situations. If you could see in this echinacea, I have spirals, not just one spiral. I have like three separate spirals. And if you count those spirals, which is really hard to do, you'll find out that you normally end up with Fibonacci numbers, but not always. But regardless, we're going to end up using this sequence over and over because it really does come up in nature more than you could ever think. And we'll show you some of those examples in future quizzes. All right, now that's your quiz.